Welcome back to my shop. My name is Guy and today I'm going to show you how to use your router table and just a few router bits to make a beautiful raised panel frame with cope and stick joinery like this. Let's get to work. If you're not familiar with cope and stick joinery, it's a really easy way to use your router table and some router bits to batch out frames for raised door panels. Now this is the style and this is the vertical part of the door frame. And this is the profile I'm going to be cutting in it. Now there is a groove for a raised door panel in here. And this would be the rail part. This is the horizontal piece. There's not only the molding part right here that's just like on the style, but there's also an end grain cut right here, which is the cope. And when you put these two pieces together, you get a really nice door frame. Now the router bits here are sold in sets. One obviously does the cope, which is on the end of the rail. And then there's a stick, which does the style. Now I'm going to do the cope end of this first. So let's get the router table set up to do this. I've got a test piece set up here in my coping sled. And the router bit's installed. Now on this piece I showed you before, this is face down. You always want to make sure that when you're doing this, when it's on the router table or on the coping sled, that the face that you want to keep is facing down. So the way I'm going to set this up is, I want an eighth inch rabbit on the back here. So I've drawn a line right here at an eighth of an inch and I'm going to slowly, slowly lower this bit until this cutter wing right here just hits that line. All right, so that's where I need it to be. And I'm just going to lock that in position. With the bit height set, now I can set up my router fence. So I've got a steel ruler here. There is a ball bearing right here. I'm just going to rest that steel ruler up against here and adjust the router fence so I'm kissing that ball bearing and hitting the fence. And that's good right there. Well, I've locked down my piece in my coping slot and I've also added a backer board right here to help reduce the blowout. So all I'm going to do is turn the router on, keep this up against the fence, and run the piece through. Well, I've got that eighth inch rabbit here on the back I was looking for, so now I can just go ahead and take my real pieces and start running them through. Well, I've got all the cope ends of the rails cut, and now I've got the style bit or the stick bit in my router table. And what I want to do is I want to cut the negative part of this. So I'm just going to butt this up against here and I'm going to slowly lower the bit until it is flush with the top of this. All right, and that appears to be good about right there. So I'm going to lock my router bit in place and then we'll get the fence set up. Now just like the cope bit, there's a roller bearing on there. I just want to move the fence up till it meets that and it's smooth across and then lock my fence down. I've got another test piece here and I've also put a feather board in place to make sure the stock stays flush up against the fence. I'm going to turn the router table on and just push it through with a push block. So I've got the two test pieces here. I'm going to put them together. And uh, I've got a nice snug fit. However, I can feel right here, this rail is about maybe a couple thousandths of an inch proud of the surface of the style. So I'm going to take my router table here and I'm going to zero this out, unlock it. I'm going to raise the bit up maybe two thousandths of an inch, lock it back down, and then use the other side of the board to make another test cut. Well, after that second test cut, I put these two pieces together and it's, it's damn near perfect, uh, which is really nice. So I need to take the styles that I'm actually going to be using for the piece and run them through the router table. Everything came together real nice. The dry fit, everything is really nice and tight. I was going for 20 for 25 and a quarter inches on this, which I am. Check it for square. It should be square. There's no reason it shouldn't be. 
42 and 5 eighths, 42 and 5 eighths. Perfect. So I need to start working on the raised panels. Well, this is a solid cherry panel that I've made up to fit inside that frame. This is going to be the raised panel. And uh, I've sized it so it's a quarter inch smaller on the sides and it's almost full size along the, the length of it. So let's go over the router table and get the router table set up to make the raised panel edging on this. Well, I've got my raised panel cutter in here and it's designed to have the panel lay flat. There's some that can be vertical. Um, I've used both. I prefer the ones that lay flat. This is a big bit and you have to make sure your router can handle a bit this large. This is a three and a quarter, I think, horsepower router. Um, now you have to also remember that this is a negative and you're always going to be putting the face of the piece down to the table. So what I want to do is I want to take this part right here and I want to lower it until it's level with the top of the table. Alright, that's good right there. So I'm going to take my little thing here. I'm going to zero it out. I want an eighth of an inch fillet on the inside, which is actually going to be down here at the bottom, because remember it's face down. So I'm going to raise my router bit up an eighth of an inch. I'm going to lock it down and I'm going to set up the fence for this. And just like before, I want the fence to be even with that roller bearing that's on there. Alright, that's it right there. So I can move this across, it moves the roller bearing, but there's no play in it. And that's perfect. So with that set up, I need to make a test cut and see how we did. So that first cut left me just about an eighth of an inch. It's just a little bit shy, not by much, but just a little bit shy. And that's good, and I'm going to keep it like that. So I'm going to take the panel, I'm going to run the end grain first, and then the long grain. Well, here's the panel. It came out very nice. Uh, I expected a lot of burning on the end grain, and actually I didn't get any. Actually, I got some burning on the long grain here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to raise the bit up maybe somewhere close to a 64th of an inch and run it again, and that'll take care of this little burning. If there was any burning on the end grain, that would also get rid of that. So the cleanup pass worked really well. I've got really nice smooth surfaces. This shouldn't require much sanding at all. I'm also going to run my test piece through this. Uh, it's very important that I do that for the next step. I've got my dado stack set up in my table saw fence. I've got a sacrificial fence and I've got three eighths of an inch of a half inch uh, width of the blade exposed and it's raised up maybe a little over 330 seconds. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do a back cut here so this will fit into that groove. And I'm going to sneak up on it. It might take me two or three passes. I'm going to make a test cut, see if it fits. If it doesn't, raise the bit up very slowly until that fits perfectly in my test piece here. Well, I've got the back cut made here. It took me, I think, four test cuts. And this is the fit I'm looking for. It slides easily into the groove. However, it doesn't fall out. And that's a nice friction fit. Uh, the other thing that's important is that on the back here, it's flat across the back, which this is. So that's nice. So now that I've got the bit height set, the right reveal, I'm going to go ahead and run the panel. So here's the dry fit of the panel. It went together very easily. All the surfaces are nice and level. Uh, the door doesn't rattle at all, which is nice. So all I have to do now is glue it up.
Well, after I'm sure the panel is in the right place and I'm nice and flush all the way around on the top and the bottom, and the rails and styles are, are flush in the right spot, I'll put some clamps on. I'm going to clamp it face down because I know my surface here is flat. I'm going to apply enough pressure just to close the joints. So I'm real flush on the top and the bottom of the styles and rails. All my joints are all closed up. I'll just let this sit in the clamps for probably two or three hours and I should be good.